In this video, we're going to look at five index laws. We're going to explain how these can be used to simplify expressions, and we're also going to explain why these methods work. So we'll start with index law one. An example of the first index law might be something such as 7 to the power of 3 multiplied by 7 to the power of 2. Now, as long as the bases are the same, see how our bases are both 7, and as long as we are multiplying, we can simply add the powers. So we're going to go 7 to the power of 3 plus 2, giving us 7 to the power of 5. So why are we allowed to do this? Well, if you look at 7 to the power of 3 and expand it, you get 7 times 7 times 7. If you now look at 7 to the power of 2 and expand that, you get 7 times 7. When we put this all together, you can see that we've got 5 7s, giving us 7 to the power of 5. Now I need to point out that I'm referring to this as index law 1. That's not the official title of this index law. It's not officially known as the first index law. It's just for convenience sake, I would like to number them. So we'll move on to index law 2. An example of the second index law might be something such as 7 to the power of 5 over 7 to the power of 2. This is the same as writing down 7 to the power of 5 divided by 7 to the power of 2. So as long as the base numbers are the same, they, they are both 7 in this case, and as long as we are dividing, we can simply subtract the powers. We can go 5 minus 2. So 7 to the power of 5 minus 2 gives us 7 to the power of 3. So why are we allowed to simply subtract the powers this time? Well, let's write this fraction in expanded form. We have at the top 7 to the power of 5. So I'm going to write that as 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. I multiplied it 5 times. At the bottom of the fraction, I have 7 to the power of 2. So I'll write that as 7 times 7. Now, you might remember when you've got the same thing above and below the fraction, either a pronumeral or even a number, you can simply cancel them. I can cancel a 7 above and below, and I can do this a second time, leaving us with only three 7s at the top, which is why we got 7 to the power of 3, and it's why we can simply subtract our powers. Moving on to our third index law, this time we're going to see a set of brackets. We'll have 7 to the power of 2 in brackets, and then all of this to the power of 3. Now when this happens, you simply multiply the powers. You go 2 times 3, which will give us 7 to the power of 2 times 3, or 7 to the power of 6. So why are we allowed to multiply the powers when we've got one inside the brackets and one outside the brackets? Well, let's expand this once again. I know that inside the brackets I've got 7 to the power of 2. Now, if I put this to the power of 3, it means I need to multiply it 3 times. So 7 to the power of 2 times 7 to the power of 2 times 7 to the power of 2. I've multiplied it 3 times. You might remember back at rule 1, when the bases are the same, you can simply add the powers. What's 2 plus 2 plus 2? Well, we get 7 to the power of 6. All right, we've got a couple more index laws to look at. So we'll call this index law 4. Once again, we've got a set of brackets, but inside our set of brackets, we're going to have more than just one number. And we're going to put this to the power of 3. So what do we do in this situation? Well, we simply apply this power of 3 to both numbers inside the brackets. So we're going to go 2 to the power of 3 times 7 to the power of 3. 
So why is it that we're allowed to do this? Well, let's look at what's inside the brackets. We've got 2 times 7, and I'm, I'm going to write it here. And I'm putting 2 times 7 to the power of 3, which means I need to perform this operation 3 times. So 2 times 7 times 2 times 7, and a third time times 2 times 7. And when you look at that, you can see that we have 3 2s and 3 7s. So we can rewrite it as 2 to the power of 3 times 7 to the power of 3. All right, index law 5 is very similar to index law 4. This time we're going to have 2 over 7, like a fraction, in brackets again. And all of this is going to be put to the power of 3. Now we're going to follow the exact same method as index law 4, where we take both numbers and we give them that power of 3. The only difference is instead of multiplication, it's going to be a fraction, which is division. So we're going to have 2 to the power of 3 over 7 to the power of 3. So why is it that we're allowed to do this? Well, let's look at what's inside the brackets here. We've got 2 over 7. And because this fraction has been put to the power of 3, we can expand it and simply write it as 2 over 7 times 2 over 7 times 2 over 7 three times. And when you look at it, when you multiply fractions, you multiply the top numbers separate to the bottom numbers. So we're multiplying 2 three times. We can write that as 2 to the power of 3. And we're multiplying 7 three times at the bottom of the fraction. We can write this as 7 to the power of 3. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing the five index laws. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.